In this episode, the craziest engine swaps we've ever seen. An old Lotus and an old Acura. Welcome to episode 238 of the We Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rowell. What is going on in your world right now? Uh, well, I've talked to some folks that have had some Porsche 911s that have blowed up their engine, and particularly in older ones, a common engine swap to an older 911 is the old faithful LS. Really? Yeah. I did not see that coming. Yeah, that's a common one. A lot of guys that have blowed up their old like 996, they say, screw it. I'm just going to put an LS in it. I'm sure fixing... You, get, you actually get better power to weight. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. I did not know that. It's a thing. I mean, they're very easy to work on, and they're easy to, like, the cheap parts compared to what is in there. For apparently. me, it's sacrilege, but... Yeah. I mean, what a thing. So that made me thinking, what are some of, like, the weirdest engine swaps in the world? So... I found this article online, which find there's like like 10 or 11 of them. But I just want to quickly scroll through this because what on earth got people thinking here? (laughs) All right. So the first thing we're looking at is an older Jaguar E-Type, which normally has a V12. Not this one. This one has a V8 from Ford. Oh, boy. (laughs) It's got Uh, a 302 V8 in it. Yeah. Uh. All I can think with this is, imagine the room for activities. Oh, my God. There's so much. (laughs) You could play pickleball in there. Yeah. (laughs) It's so crazy. (laughs) The next thing we see we come to is a a 2JZ swapped Ford Mustang. That, this is all going to be sacrilege, isn't it? Oh, it's the weirdest, craziest thing in the world. Okay. That is not what's supposed to go in a Ford Mustang. It's not. So, you're not supposed to pull up to a Mustang and hear that, woo to two. Yeah. No. That is really weird. 2 J go woo to two, but not in a Mustang. I'm kind of about it. I'm kind I, of about it. I don't hate it. It's yeah. so odd, but I'm going to tell you, my favorite one so far is what we're scrolling to next. Oh, God. Oh it's God. a Honda S2000 with the V10 out of a Dodge Viper. That would be the rowdiest thing. Because why don't you want a <laughs> Honda S2000 that has, like, I don't know, 500 <laughs> horsepower? That car would drive like absolute poop, but it would be the rowdiest thing to roll up to the car show and rev an engine and just... No one expects a V10 in an S2000. Make ears bleed. Because why don't you want a V10 S2000? That would be so weird. Although you are taking out that really nice high revving uh, Honda engine that is in there. But (laughs) But you're giving (laughs) eight liters of V10 engine from a Viper. Oh, there's so much... It's so much displacement. It's so much engine for I such know. a little car. It, the the weight, the front wheels just must die from that thing. I don't know how the front suspension even exists anymore. No, it has to be so up. Yeah. The whole front of the car just got to be sunken into the ground. That's wild. The next thing we scroll to is a Ferrari 308 GTBI with a Honda K24 a K- in it. <laughs> we actually briefly chatted about something like this when we were talking about SEMA of uh, many episodes back. Because this was at SEMA. This is actually ridiculously cool. No, it's neat. All it's, of these are cool. Oh, for sure. The K24 is one of the most like popular swaps outside of an LS. Yeah. And a 2J. Small, pretty easy to work on. Yeah. I mean, it's a four-cylinder out of like an Acura TSX or a Honda Accord. Right. Right? Like... What? And apparently they're capable of holding a lot of power. Yeah, if you have like the right seals and right modifications to them, they can hold a ton of power. Like a thousand horsepower or something yeah. like that. Yep. Apparently that's what this car, that Ferrari does. <laughs> God. You're laughing at what's coming next. Uh, yes, I am. What is it? A Rolls Royce Phantom with the 2JC in it. <laughs> Do you want a 2JC swapped Rolls Royce Phantom? <laughs> Let's go. What is, what's normally in the Phantom? It's, uh, I believe, a V12. Is it a V or a W? It, uh, no, it was a six and a three quarter liter v12 out of uh bmw that's right it's yeah i see it down there oh boy it's a massive thing a 2jz a big single turbo 2j rolls royce phantom people will swap 2j's into anything won't they would you 2j swap your car 
Actually, you yeah. know what? Yeah, that would, would be sick. Yeah, it would. A BRZ with the 2J? That'd be sick. That would be the most... Me- oh, that would be the perfect... I th- actually think that would be the perfect 86 swap. If it had like 350 horsepower, yeah, it'd be beautiful. Ooh, Anything more than that, and you'd, yeah. That'd be it, amazing. It couldn't, it couldn't hold much more than that. So the Rolls-Royce Phantom 2JZ. That's, cool. That's neat. And then... Oh, God. This may be well, the uh, oddest uh, swap of them all. A DeLorean... With the engine from a Kia Stinger. That's not right. No, it's not. That's not right. You get a 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 out of a Kia Stinger in the DeLorean. That's the last engine that came to mind. When I thought oh, it's absolutely the last engine that came to mind ever. But I will tell you, it definitely made this thing so much faster. Oh, yeah. Because do you remember us talking about the DeLorean? Yeah. It is so slow. It was absurdly it slow. It was like zero to 60 in like 10 seconds or something like that. Yeah, it's like it's dangerous. It's so bad. But this one's got the engine out of a Kia Stinger. Who swaps a Kia Stinger engine into a car? That was my question. Uh, who pulls a Kia Stinger out of a Kia Stinger to put it in another car? Why? Why? What? <laughs> it's a Kia. Put it out to pasture. Go get a 2JZ. Go get a crate motor. Even the, the Civic stuff. Uh, sure. Get an LS. Get something. Sure. Get anything but a Kia Stinger engine. Ugh. But I love how ridiculous it is, and that's why it's fantastic. Its flux capacitor has gone missing. It has. Yes. <laughs> the next thing we scroll to is a Corvette with a rotary. That is just awesome. That's kind of cool. So I love that, and here's why. What is like the most common engine that swapped into an old RX-7 that had its engine blown up? It's, the, it's an LS. Yeah, it is an LS. Where does an LS come from? Yeah. Ah, is the the thirteen B is that the three rotor or two rotor? I don't know off the top of my head. I I'll look it up. Tell you, I, I'm not the rotor expert here. <laughs> you were more, you were much more like to likened to the rotor. Yeah, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I know that the 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 race engines that were in like the RX eight back in the day at Daytona when they used to run Grand Am stuff. Those were what? Those were four th- rotors, three or four rotors. But I think stock, it was three or two. I know it had one less than whatever came stock in that. So the, regardless, having a Corvette with a rotary, it would sound so oddly different, but also be a lot of fun. Yeah, it'd be so much fun. Apparently, this one puts out 550 horsepower. That's a lot. Yeah, it's so cool. Also, those seals, rip those seals. Oh, my God, they're dead. Yeah. They're dead. And the next swap we come to is an odd one. It's an Acura NSX, but it's got a K24 in it. Hmm. That just seems silly. What else has a K24? Where's that come from? Acura oh. uh, TSX. Yeah. yeah or yeah, a Honda yeah, okay. Accord. Right. That's the Honda engine. Do you want an Accord? Right. Uh. Well. Oh. That's weird. I, I'm kind of not. Well, is that sacrilege? No, not really. Well, it is, but it isn't. Yeah. Because it had a V6 from factory. It's still in the family. But it is, but it's wrong. Downgraded. Is that like incestual? <laughs> is, it's the is downgraded. That, uh, is this going to like Kentucky somewhere or Alabama? Might be. Is this accurate in Alabama? You Alabama had the accurate. newest iPhone and then you went backward two generations. It's so odd. Hmm. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's you, you dropped two cylinders. Yeah. I mean, I get it because you can make a lot of power with, K, with K24, but... Just Keep seems, the V6, and you can make a lot of power with that And well. It so just seems weird. odd. Yeah, that's really weird. Huh. And, of course, we have another 2J swap, but this one is in a Lamborghini Gallardo. Yeah, there's more than just a 2J swap. That thing is, well, hardly Lambo anymore, is it? No, that thing has been so customized, it's pretty wild. Apparently, that thing was dead and all blowed up when he bought it. So, instead of keeping a blown up Lamborghini, he said, okay, let's swap in... A 2JZ that puts down about a 1,000 horsepower. <laughs> and I see that this is from uh, 2011 SEMA. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'm not surprised to see that at SEMA, though. It is a SEMA. That's a very SEMA car. It, it's it's a SEMA. Yeah. It's a SEMA. What's this next thing? Uh, a Nissan Skyline GTR Ford. What is that? Barra. Barra? Mm-hmm. What is a Barra? Uh, it's an engine. It's uh, actually it's a, an engine range. That was created by Ford Australia. Oh. And hmm. it's, well, it has an inline six and a V8. A Skyline with a Ford V8 from Australia? Nope. Inline six. 
Oh, they went inline six. They went through the inline six rep. What a weird, what a weird combo. Again, these are just like, who came up with this? (laughs) I don't know. Who came up with this? Why would you not just keep the, they had a 2JZ in there? No, it had an RB. Oh, you're right. Nissan's were RBs. Why would you not just keep that in there? I'm sure they blew it up for something, but. Oh, it was definitely blown up, but I don't understand why you would put a Ford Barra inline six. Ugh. That's an odd one. It's very weird. That's a very odd one. Now we come to your dream car. Ryan Turk's Ferrari powered GT eighty six, but he calls it a four five eight eighty six. <laughs> four five eight six. <laughs> yeah, four five eight six. <laughs> nice. Do you want that? Uh, Could you imagine your car with a Ferrari V eight in the front of it? Be pretty awesome. It That'd would be pretty sound awesome. So cool. That'd be pretty awesome. It'd sound like the flat hum, the nice hum. That it comes would from sound Ferrari. amazing. Yeah, but that's also not. I don't know. The boxer it's engine Italian, has its own. It's Italian and Japanese together. Yes, but the boxer engine has its own unique sound to it. It'd be nothing like that. It would be absolutely nothing like that. <laughs> it would be the most unlike that thing that you can imagine. Right. It wouldn't be bad, though. So, of all your V8 swaps, right, you've got an LS, and then you've got. The Ferrari V8. The Ferrari V8. It's pretty cool. It's cool. Confusing, but cool. Yeah, yeah. And then the last thing that is in this article, it is a very, very odd thing that neither one of you or I have ever heard of. What the heck? It's a Trabant-powered Audi A4 Avant, but they've like modified it to be like kind of really rat rod style, so like Mad Max looking thing. What? Apparently the body is made mostly out of like wood. I don't really understand it, but... It's apparently a Trabant is an old East German car. That's a Trabant. There you go. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> In the engine of that car is a 0.6 liter. So a <laughs> little over a half of a liter. Uh, two stroke in line two that makes 26 horsepower and 40 pound view torque. 26 horsepower and 40. There are lawnmowers that make more than that. Now, this car, they have shaved a lot of weight off because it's all plywood now, but it weighs about 1,300 pounds, which is light. Agreed? Yeah, for a car. But it only does, has 26 horsepower. Uh, it wouldn't go anywhere. It does 0 to 60 in 30 seconds. What? It has a top speed of 70. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do it? What? <laughs> they took the engine out of this little tiny pokey little thing and put it in this giant uh, Audi weird Yvonne. Audi rat rod thing. That is the most European weird thing I've ever seen. It is very odd. Yeah. I don't understand this. Uh, That's only a European thing, man. So when it comes to like the craziest engine swaps, I think this list covers a lot of them. I think that one honestly takes the cake. To, to downgrade to 26 horsepower? I don't know. Something ain't right. There's some wires that are crossed there, I think. Something ain't right. I will say, good news is Volkswagen is releasing, releasing a crate engine for the VR6. Oh. That, if you blow something up, please put a Volkswagen VR6 in it. It sounds like a Wookiee when you open it up. Please do it. Just do it. <laughs> when you open the crate. <laughs> I, I, I love the sound of a VR6 once it's been exhaust intake and all that. Yep. I Maybe I should swap a VR6 in my Jetta. I also saw an article that Mazda's bringing the rotary back, but they're not bringing it back in the way that you think. They're bringing it back to be a hybrid to charge a battery and do this weird... Uh, kind of like the Fisker Karma. Yeah, <clears throat> it sounds bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't it know about that. sound good. It seems yeah. odd. It's very odd. But yeah. I wish they were just bringing it back to put it in the next iteration of their RX sports car, but they're not doing that. I wish. I wish they made all of their vehicles with the rotary. I, that's a big wish. It is. <laughs> I don't but know about Just that like <laughs> every, every vehicle Mazda makes has to be a rotary. Everyone gets a new seals at 100,000 miles every time. I don't know, dude. That's oh, a guarantee. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's not that fun. <laughs> that engine's fun, but it's not that fun. Ah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So as you were out and about, did you see anything, my friend? I did. I saw a car I don't actually see very much of. It is an old Lotus. It is the Lotus Esprit, but I believe it was a Series 4, so something like 94-ish and up. 
And what a cool looking thing. That is a cool little car. Man. I don't think I've ever seen one. Not me neither. That's neat. I, it was kind of parked in front of like a, a shop, and I drove by. I was like, "Huh, I like that. That's kind of cool." What color was it? Red. Exactly like that. Ooh, it looked exactly like that car. That's neat. It was really cool. Now I didn't know much about this, so I did a quick Google. Now I, apparently they made this with a V8, so I don't know if I did see a V8 or not. But if I did, this was a pretty potent little thing. Wow. Um, apparently it was a twin turbo V8. Jeez. Yeah. It okay. made well, the potential to let's see up to 500 horsepower and 350 horse uh, or pardon me. 350 horsepower up to 500, depending on how it was tuned. Oh, my goodness. 4.4 second, 0 to 60. Huh. How much did it weigh? Do you have a curb weight there? Um, 2,800 to 2,900 pounds, so sub 3,000 pounds. It's light. That'd be a fun car. 300 to 500 horsepower in that? I'm surprised 0 to 60 is not lower than that, honestly. Well, this is from the 90s. Yeah. They just Suspension wasn't there. Yeah. You weren't going to connect at all. You're just going to spin. Tires weren't there, right? And, yeah, the engine extracted one-tenth the power that it was supposed to. Correct. Because of the EPA. Yep. Yep. Hmm. But you know what? What a cool thing. That's a neat-looking car. I haven't really ever seen a Lotus Esprit before, and I saw it, and I had to do a double take. Like, ooh. ooh. Surprised we haven't seen these at, like, car shows or whatnot, too. I agree. And it reminds me of the, the traditional Lotus saying, simplify and add lightness. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Just make it lighter and make it faster. Mm-hmm. End. Neat. Now they're going heavier and electric, but I, I digress. All of them are. Did you see anything while you were out about? Uh, I did. I saw this, not this specific one, but basically this car, uh, which is a black, I believe it's a 91, 92 NSX. Uh, I couldn't tell if it was a five-speed or not because it was going the other way. Uh, but, ooh, the car that I need to get next. That's the car that I need to get next. You do need an NSX. I do. I do. The old NSX, that's right up my alley. A uh, couple it, numbers for you. Is it the only old car that you would really consider? Because you're not really an old car person, are you? No, I'm not like into an old Corvette or an old Mustang or something like that. So no. I'm saying. This is like the old Derek kind of heritage stuff. Yeah, probably. I want you to buy this. That'd be awesome. I uh, really want you to this buy This one sold, uh, looks like 2022 uh, for 66 grand. This one's turbocharged though. It is. They're not supposed to be. Okay, I see. Uh, stock coming out of the factory, making 270 horsepower. Uh, you could get them in an automatic or a manual, but the five-speed manual was the way of course, to go. That's the correct answer. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They would also make 210 pound-feet of torque, so not a lot, not a lot at all. No. Um, but it didn't need a lot because it only weighed 3,010 pounds. Fair. That's light. It's nearly as light as your Esprit. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, it did have a 3-liter V6, uh, 0 to 60, around 6.3 seconds. So, like I said, not particularly fast, but it didn't matter because you drove this to take it through the corners because it had a great balance to it. It was a fun car to track. Yeah, just a fun car. Yeah, right. that was the whole reason for it. That's why you saw Senna hooning this around. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. So, good spot, good spot. Heck, yeah. So, let's move on to the I wish they would have. Okay. And what do you wish they would have? So I wish uh, that cars had built-in front and rear like dash cams or, or cameras that you can view from the dash. And I know a lot of cars do nowadays, but I wish that they had those for the situation that you get run into or someone uh, you run into someone or the you're or, in Russia and an asteroid flies across the screen and you yes, have that video. Or, for example, one of our instructors was driving and a car flipped like over him oh didn't oh touch goodness his car. didn't touch his cars at all what yep just tumbled over pretty well yeah holy moly yeah those kind of moments yeah uh would be ideal for insurance as well to be able to have the proof and whatnot but i don't know why more cars don't have them built in um I know some cars do, but they also don't always activate like on accident and whatnot. Uh, Tesla being the one that has like their sentry mode where you can put the car, park it, tell it. If anything happens, record all the cameras at once. Yeah. I'm not sure why more cars don't have that, to be honest. I agree. That would be a good idea. Yeah. What do you got? I have, and I wish there would have, that is a little odd, but you'll see where I'm going with this. I wish that either your windshield or your headlights or something like that would have a low visibility mode where like 
they would turn yellow for like cutting through the glare of the rain or the snow if you live in a snowy climate. Okay. Does yellow solve that problem most of the time? A lot, yeah. Hmm. Like, for example, ski goggles. If you think about it this way, ski goggles, the really reflective ski goggles are not great to ride in like heavy snow Hmm. because they just make things duller. Right. But if you have ski goggles that are like actually for like low light, then you can actually see through stuff. Cuts is, glare out. I don't know off the top of my head. Is it the polarization that is helping? I don't actually it? think it's the polar. I, I don't know. I don't 100% know if it's polarization itself or not. Okay. Yeah, you, you have to figure out like um, somebody knows this. I'm sure the science between what wavelengths are being reflected in the in the snow or mm-hmm. the, the rain. But yeah, like I wish you could like press a button and all of a sudden your windshield either turn yellow, like ski goggles or your headlights yeah. would just go yellow. Something would go for low visibility. That is certainly a thing. Every time you're in a big rainstorm at any state anywhere and you're driving a car, you're like, I just want to be able to see that extra five to 10 feet further to know if there's a car stopped in the middle of the road because mm-hmm. you want that extra distance. But when it's properly raining, you can't, you can't see far at all. No, you can't see anything. Or snowing. It's just scary. Yeah, it gets a little gnarly pretty quick. Yeah. So yeah, it's my wish would have. I liked it. You got anything else for episode 238? I do not. Then that is going to wrap us up. Thank you so much for watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up on the video, and drop a comment. Let us know what is the craziest engine swap you've ever heard of. Be curious to know your thoughts there. And if you're listening on audio only, send us those thoughts via social. Facebook is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. YouTube is We Are Auto. And our website is We Are Auto.io. So thanks again. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.